This is a Chucky Beat production. So, I am on my way right now to meet uh, Tamar, one of my good friends. Um, I'll tell you guys a little bit of my uh, background about what happened to her uh, yesterday. She has the same alarm system as I do in her motorcycle. She's got the CBR 250R. And she's got the Azaka Achrona, which is um, an alarm system that's connected to um, so-called 24-7 uh, customer service center, which actually functions as like a private uh, security firm who's in charge of, uh, in the case of your bike getting stolen or something uh, along those lines, they're in charge of actually uh, getting it back to you from the thieves because it's got like uh, it's an alarm system with a GPS unit along with an uh, application on your phone which you can download and see it each and every moment where your bike is exactly within 10 meters on your phone and also uh, see the um, current uh, battery charge of the motorcycle itself uh, you know if somebody if someone's uh, touching it or whatnot. Uh, if they're really trying to, you know, uh, take your bike or steal it or move it, then it will send you um, an alert to the application on your phone, and your phone will actually start, uh, you know, going crazy and stuff and uh, ringing and all that shit from the application itself. Now, the downside of this um, damn alarm system is that usually, typically, it works great, okay? Uh, there's not really much, a lot of downsides to it. The main downside though is that it kills your fucking battery. It literally literally kills it. That's why if I don't go riding uh, for about a day and a half to two days, even in the summer, in the winter it was even worse. If I uh, wouldn't go out riding for like 15 to 20 minutes, I would check my application in the winter and the battery would show that it's literally lower than uh, 12 point something volts, uh, the battery charge. And you know, I saw that, I was like, holy fucking shit, I should, I, uh, I literally need to run downstairs, you know, turn it on and go riding for like 15, 20 minutes. So uh, when I have to go to work tomorrow, I won't have any, uh, you know, starting up problems and all that shit. And so, you know, that's, that's a really big problem, you know, because uh, at the same time, yeah, I mean, it's a peace of mind. You know, you can go to sleep at night knowing that someone else in that 24-7 uh, security center is watching and watching over your bike and all that shit. But on the other side, this kills your battery, you know, which is a big downside. This is already the second battery I had replaced in my 636 since I bought it. And it hasn't even been a year yet that I've had my 636 that I've had Sarah. Now, you know, that's honestly fucking uh, preposterous. Now, you know, that's a major big fucking downside. And another major big downside about this uh, alarm system is that sometimes it just doesn't get uh, locked. Like, I literally, I'll check the application after I've gotten home for like uh, an hour that I've been home, and it's supposed to automatically lock your bike and the alarm system within 10 minutes of uh, you turning off the bike, okay, turning off the engine and everything. And now, a lot of times, it doesn't get locked. And I'll check it. And it's showing my bike being like a completely different fucking area of Israel. Like where I uh, ridden uh, like a day earlier or something. Still stuck there on like 14 point something volt. And going like 120 or 110, whatever I was going that specific uh, second. Where the last update was sent to the phone and the application on my phone. And you know, I, j I just think that, you know, for the amount of money that I paid for this alarm system, and it's a very expensive alarm system, keep that in mind too. You know, it should function a lot better than how it's been functioning until now. And obviously until now, it just literally, there, there's like these days where I just feel like I'm, I paid like so much money, like almost 5,000 shekels to put on this alarm system. And it's literally, functions and works like a fucking cheap 500 check alarm like honestly guys like if you seriously want to keep your customers like go ahead and you know fucking invest in your alarm and make sure it works properly i mean jesus fucking christ i mean i don't want to get home and then have to 
barely sleep at night just thinking about my bike because I checked the application after I got home and I see that it's somewhere in like fucking um, you know road 6 on the way back from Jerusalem or road 6 on going to the Jerusalem and still stuck there from like freaking 10:35 uh, a.m. yesterday and it still hasn't updated and it's been like a day or a day and a half now that's another major major downside you know you pay this much fucking money for an alarm system you know, and then there's also a monthly fee, you know, because uh, you're paying the service center every month to keep an eye on your bike 24-7. You know, for this sort of an expensive alarm system, you know, you would expect it to be a lot more on point and work like how the hell it's supposed to work. And not have to fucking call that damn service center every Monday and fucking Friday or Thursday to tell them, Hey guys, uh, can you please go ahead and uh, lock in my bike and my alarm? I'm home now and still hasn't updated. Thanks. I shouldn't have to fucking do that. And don't even get me started about talking about the lack of customer service in Israel. It's just... there. You know, let's, let's just go ahead and mention that there is no customer, customer service in Israel. If you're coming here and you're expecting to get customer service, even at the least or like good customer service just go ahead and uh, throw that thought out of your mind you know you're not going to get any customer service whatsoever in israel uh now other than that you know don't expect to get good customer service if any at all from any other place here in israel i don't care if it's a big place you know a well-respected company just forget about it right now if you're coming to visit you're not gonna get any good customer service okay okay ah shit i needed to turn here and that's another uh, you know main reason that uh, Israel is, is just such a piece of shit uh, crappy uh, shithole in the Middle East because uh, you know there's obviously no uh, you know no really good customer service uh, like you get in the States um, don't ask me the reason why not gotta find a turn somewhere here bitch what the fuck are you doing yeah. See him trying to cut me off in the same lane that I am fucking in. Ah, I swear to these fucking Israeli cons, man. Literally every day I drive in Tel Aviv, I feel like I'm just thinking about these fucking cagers. I'm not sure where the hell they got their license, man, honestly. It's like they just completely forgot how the fuck to drive. And I've been told that it's the same pretty much all over the world, so... And it is, it's true. Hell, I've been watching a lot of uh, Arson Rides uh, videos lately and Baker X Derek's. Been having a little bit more uh, time off lately to watch them, so... I've been watching them and honestly people drive in California even worse than you do in Israel sometimes and that says something Find a U-turn spot here But we wait after the bus even though it feels like an oven over here from the bus's exhaust but uh yeah whatever If you guys uh, would have felt how hot it was uh, in the past couple of days you would know Little, little fucking scooter cunts pass me Don't want them next to my beautiful Sarah Oh, what a fucking mess guys Honestly, I fucking hate riding in Tel Aviv Just a shithole filled with too many cars And too many people Too noisy as well And too many little scooter cunts Oh damn, poor Tamar She's probably already waiting for me at Honda A long time now Told her I'll be there in like 15 minutes I'm like, nah Left my house only after like 10 minutes after talking with her I was like, shit that's okay, because she's uh, supposed to get the part of praise that uh, she went yesterday uh, to Azakah Achona to get her alarm system replaced because it's uh, been uh, really goofing off lately. So they changed the brain of the alarm. They put a new um, alarm computer. And as they changed it, they actually scratched her uh, dial area here for all the dashes and stuff on her CBR250. And now she wants them to, you know, cover the cost of the replacement or the fix for it. So she's going here to Honda to get it appraised and see how much it's going to cost to get it fixed or replaced. A lot of road bumps. I hope you jumped and peed your pants, you little fucking cunt. Ooh, turned into a stunt. Very nice, sir. And for exhaust and everything, all ins. I'll tip my hat off to you, good sir, if I had one. 